It's Wrecking Ball Radio. Shut up and entertain me. There's no Shut rules. There's no oh, rules. Oh. Holy sh! It's amazing. I see her sarcasm and nastiness grow. Yeah. <laughs> this is Davin's Den. Good evening, everybody. You are listening or watching Davin's Den. Yes, Davin's Den, the show that is better than getting no Valentines in your mailbox made out of a tissue box. It's very sad when that happens. That that uh, you know, it's rough being yeah. a kid. I bet that couldn't even happen today. I bet I bet now everybody has to get like a certain amount. I bet there's a rule now in in the classrooms where everybody has to get a Valentine. I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess that I guess that's a good rule because you know, you know, uh, as a kid, you compare. You know, why did I get X amount and this person got three X? I got that? my Valentine's ready to fill out for my class. What is that? They're Valentine's for my my class. Class of what? Yeah, for for work. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Very ridiculous. laughs> you can watch us on DavinComedy.com and on the Davin's Den Facebook page. This is right. I am your host, Davin Rosenblatt. I am joined by Pip Helix. Hello, Pip. Hi, everybody. And uh, I don't know if he's there. Joe, you there? MIA Joe. The sh- the show snuck up on him. On the sh- <laughs> on the show, the uh, 2024 Valentine's Day Valentine's uh, Day Love Fails countdown and scamming scammers. The first time we're going to be doing any of these countdown shows using a, a terrestrial radio clock. So we'll see how that works. Uh, how do you feel about your three, Pip? You feel good? Miserable. Really? Yeah, I am very disappointed in my choices. I shouldn't say that because then I don't have a leg to stand on when we're arguing. But I mean, I thought that there are one or two points that are intriguing, but I was hoping for better. Intriguing is good, though, if it's the right type of intriguing, because, you know, there, you know. It, it, there's only so many ways you can chop up your lover so you know <laughs> how how do you feel about yours you know i um i felt good i feel good but i i don't know i i you know i i never know because i you know sometimes i get a little cute because i try to make like um uh, a point because i'm trying to entertain and you know and then in the face of entertainment, I have to sometimes go against barbaric. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and then you get slaughtered on the show. Not necessarily, but it, it, it is it it can be tough. But I, I do I do think this many years into it, there's something to be said for showing a different wrinkle. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This year I have been excruciatingly careful about the timing. Because we'll, we'll be the judge of that, dear. We'll, we'll how see. many times I have I been in the middle of reading the story and saying, "Ah, oh, damn." <laughs> yeah, no, it's ha- it's happened quite a bit. It's yeah, it's I know. So I I have been very careful, and there were some great stories that I had to discount because of that. I was reading one story, and then like there was like a bunch of comments that this has been around forever. This is an old wives' tale. This, yeah. that, the other thing. I'm like, all right, well then we can't use that. And there are some really good ones that are on Reddit, but you have no idea when they happened, and you don't know if they're legitimate at all or just somebody's creative writing experiment. But uh, there's some really good ones. So before we went on the air, we were doing a little pre-show. I told you I'm uh, making all sorts of old man old man noises. Hey, oh, because you know <laughs> we had the snow. I I dealt with that, and I lift weights and all that stuff. So uh, on Sunday we go down to my um, niece's house. And uh, she recently had um, a baby boy. So now now I'm a great uncle, so which is cool, I guess. So I'm a great uncle because I was her uncle. Right. Oh, that's now, true. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You're, you're, uh, you're iffy about the greatness. <laughs> I'm an average at best uncle. <laughs> yes. Men's so men's. We're, so we're sitting and they, they, they recently bought a new house. Um, so we're sitting on we're sitting on the couch, and my wife's like, "Oh, this is a really comfortable couch, but it's a very deep couch. You know how it's like it goes very far back, right?" I go, "Yeah, 
but it's not for people. It's not good for people our age to get out of. <laughs> what did you get? What did you get stuck in the thing? Hello, Joe. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I got off. I'm not. I'm not doing this show for my niece's house, you animal. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe, I bring the equipment with me wherever I go because I never know when this will be the last time I'm upright. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there have been people who got on a couch and for whatever godforsaken reason have been there for a really long time and never got up and they kind of meld to Yeah, the couch grows into them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's the fart that seals in the freshness. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't really put I, I can't really reason out how you are stuck on a piece of fabric long enough that you and it become one. Now, that's something coming from you. I know. I know. But then uh, again, then again, you do have your own defense mechanism where if we can get you laughing enough, you'll create your own lubricant that will slide you right off the couch. So, <laughs> yeah, we've all seen it happen. <laughs> It's quite the treat. <laughs> when, when she gets when she gets scared, she puts out her her defense, her liquid defense. You know, octopuses have their ink. You know, nature is funny that way. Yeah, this this way predators don't eat you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing keeping it from happening. If I sit still long enough. No, but Joe, to your point, it's like it was a it was a deeper couch, and I'm not I'm not a deep man. No, I, I I'm not a very I'm not a very tall human being. So there's some scooching involved. You gotta you gotta scooch to stand position. You just can't leap up from the back of the couch when you have short little legs. So. Oh yeah, there major scoopage. There's there have been friends' couches where I thought I had been engulfed by the couch and you have to get up in that awkward way like pregnant women are getting up out of the couch, like uh, uh, moving around and, and it's really ungainly looking and embarrassing. So so we're blaming the couch that that is now your dismount of choice. Okay. Right. Uh, not always. You gotta, get, you gotta get that chair that, that lifts up off the ground and then dumps you out like a fucking. You ever see that? Yes. Chair? You up and it yes. throws you out of it. Yeah, but but uh, this isn't at my house. This is somebody else's. <laughs> like you know when you bring go to a show, you bring your PA, go to people's house, bring the chair. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's sort of like uh, the furniture version of land moving equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very comfortable couch but you know when we were looking at couches and, and, and the couch we have is a very good couch it has all the recliners and again like, oh, at, like couch is a very 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 fine couch doesn't it sound like that's what he's singing <laughs> i hope your couch eats you anyway <laughs> so yeah. so so you know like everything we can't just get the first one like this house, 52 freaking houses, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the wife is very particular. So we went through many, many couches and we settled on this couch, which is a good couch. It's a big couch. It's a comfy couch. She's like, eh. Very fine couch. I don't really like the couch. Are you fucking kidding me? You got to stop. Then why are we even... <laughs> and, and then the, my, my daughter, we were out at my niece's house and they had this this house is like a hundred years old, and some of the stuff might not have been updated in a hundred years, which means it's back in style. Yeah. So we're in the, so we're in the bathroom, and my daughter's like, "Well, oh, this is the bathroom I would have I wanted." I'm like, "I'm like, you helped design it." It's like, "No, I sent pictures. You didn't pick that one." I go, "Well, maybe if you and your mother got off your asses and would have come to the tile store." <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Yeah, if you, know, you, if you want what you want, you have to go and pick it out and bring it to the counter and say this. I yes, want but here, but here's of the thing. this. Even when these women get what they want, it turns out it's not what they want. So I I tell you, when I got my couch, I got a theater style couch <clears throat> and um I've heard complaints and that's what I wanted. And I've heard complaints from Joe's girl. <clears throat> and when a certain cat came by, so why would I buy a theater seat? Because it's my fucking house. That's what I wanted, and that's what so I. So what's a theater seat? It means it doesn't go all the way across. There's like armrests in the middle. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a big console in the middle of it. 
Now my basement couch has that, but it folds down and it folds up, so you so it's not always in the middle. That's handy, yeah. Oh, yours doesn't do that. Yours is like, nope, I'm down. Here we are. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's and that's what I wanted. Like I said, uh, Joe's girl and a certain cat that came by. Never, never you know what that. it is, Joe. Let me, let me, let me. Here's what it is. You date whores, and you're a respectable man, and you want you want everybody acting respectable like teenagers should on the couch. So that's why you can't be having the scooching. That's why the console's there to separate the people. That's why Joe's a respectable man. You know these these, these women they just want to jump on Joe and do what they want with Joe, and Joe's like, nay, nay. This is a respectable house. The yes. Get back, what? woman. You can't have all this right now. You don't get this right now. Back, woman. See, Joe's just a tasty treat, and they 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 resent having to wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, pal. <laughs> it's like you gotta you gotta stop dating these loose women that uh that can't resist you. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would he do that? <laughs> I, I well. Because he's a respectable man with a respectable couch. You just can't go in. You just can't mosey into the beach house that's nowhere near the beach and have your way with our with our skipper. You can't do that. <laughs> that's very bizarre. Well, he's a bizarre man. <laughs> this this house is not built for comfort. I want to be upright when I am watching Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> that's right. I understand, Joe. <laughs> You have to be alert while watching Ice Road Truckers. Yes, yes. Joe is always alert, always on watch. He, you know, if he has a cow, a couch without dividers, he might nod off. But this way, Joe is always vigilant. <laughs> Joe, if I may, because. <laughs> oh wow! Throwback, Blue Hawk. Oh yeah, no, I, I can't be Blue Hawk anymore. There's another Blue Hawk. What? Who? Yes. There's, there's apparently a, blue, a superhero Blue Hawk. Uh, I had I, no idea. Joe, <gasps> Joe is Blue Hawk super, uh, sidekick, Blue Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. I mean, what? You, you, will, you will notice Blue Balls is on alert when he has a tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I do a quick use think? A quick use think to optimize. Hold, well, hold on. Hold on. Like Stop. Stop. Like a teenage runaway. Stop! Right? Stop! Stop! First, yes. Second, let me cue up the bumper. And then you could go on your rant. Relax. Just a quick rant. Don't worry. It's quick. Don't even bother. Continue. Long story. That was it? That was it. That's why I said, just let me do what you get done. I'm trying to get on. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah Joe, Joe does have a lousy so internet. Carry on. <laughs> yes, carry on. All right. So, um, so Pip, did you watch the Super Bowl? Not one bit. I don't understand how you could not watch something that's so important to our country's uh, presidency. But I digress. We'll get there. So, it's not important to me. Well, we'll, we'll start with the halftime show. Okay. So, uh, are you familiar with Usher? Yeah. Do you like Usher? No, but I, <laughs> I'm familiar with him. I think that I think that's all three of us. I think we're all aware of Usher, but none of us are necessarily fans of Usher. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but but he's a, he's a legitimate star. He's a big star. Yeah, he is. Um, but none of us really know his music. Um, I turns out the the one song, yeah, um, I know, but I didn't even know that was Usher because all I think about with that song, yeah, is Little John, and the only reason I know who Little John is is because he was on Celebrity Pr Apprentice before Donald Trump became Emperor of the World. So, uh, so I I used to I used to watch Celebrity Apprentice and I said, you know what? That man in that boardroom with yes people, he'd make a fine president. And I was right. I was so right. <laughs> bite your tongue. Bite it. Bite it. Okay. All right. So Usher's doing the halftime show. And you know, as usual, in my opinion, when and I'm not putting Joe in this category, because Joe is different but for the most part uh <laughs> when, when there is a black artist old white people and i say old my people my age and older start fetching oh this oh like they're expecting elo to be the halftime show or something <laughs> we would want we would want that 
for Floyd to call. Yes. But we know it's not going to happen. No, 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 Joe. We know. It's not going to happen. A lot of the people appear that we know on Facebook apparently are still holding out hope. <laughs> but yes. And there's a reason for that. If you think about the past 20 years, black artists have been much more influential on pop culture and pop music. I mean, listen, we're all fans of legacy bands here. Every, every well, uh, and whatever Pip likes. But I mean, we're all, <laughs> we're all fans of legacy bands here. But let's be honest, those bands haven't moved the needle, the needle culturally in more than 20 years 30 mm -hmm. years you know they're just they put out songs that you know they make albums but they're yeah and they still tour and do well but as far as moving the needle culturally they're irrelevant but these black artists like rihanna usher beyonce they who've been around for 20 plus years they have hits and they're mm -hmm. more relevant and let's be honest most of the athletes in the uh, nfl identify more with them than they do with, as Joe said, Blue Oyster Cult or Bon Jovi or whatever. And it's not like the NFL doesn't give a nod to that stuff. They had Reba McIntyre um, do the national anthem. They had, they had, for the country fans, they had Post Malone do America the Beautiful. You know, so they're giving a nod. But, I mean, realistically, the black artists are the most influential and, you know, the NFL halftime show has become about wow moments. That's really what it's become about. And I didn't really see any. And, and, and it's not being an old white man. That's, uh, you know, no, I know that. I know, I know, I know in this case, it's not you being an old white man. Years ago, they had a salute to rap. I think I'm an a couple of, and it was really, it was really, really. You know what's funny, Joe? You just said they had a salute to rap and you named the one white rapper. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the other. I know. know. No, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It was a real. It was a really good presentation. This was bland. Um, I disagree with you. Again, I'm not. I'm not talking to you the way I am. All the all, all of our peers, they're old funny duddies. Because I know you will watch it and give something a chance, even if it's not yours. But I do disagree. I do disagree with you on this personal thing. First of all, Usher's music we find kind of boring to begin with. So it's not going to it's not going to pop for us. So you got, I have to put that aside. There's not I mean a lot of his stuff is slower and it's it just it just doesn't scratch any of us where we itch and we're probably in the minority um at that about that maybe not our for our age. But here's but if when they started the the halftime show they had the camera like panning through on the field and they had all these people like interesting poses, frozen poses, costumes, things that look very difficult. I mean, I'm having trouble getting off a couch and, you know, these people are like standing on one toe and balancing and all. So it, it was very interesting, I thought. What? And they, they had, they, what? That sounds interesting. Yeah. Visually. They had costume changes. They had ca cameos. By like Alicia Keys, Lil John, her. So they had the famous cameos that Joe was just talking about that we've become accustomed to with these uh, halftime shows, and they did something which I hadn't really seen before. Well, maybe maybe the uh, the ABBA uh, movie that they had years ago was a Fandango, but it was like it was like singing on roller skates, which you have like and like intricate dancing on roller skates. And I don't know why that didn't move you, Joe. But we're not watching anything like that. At best, you have as a as a as a singer on a treadmill with a Ramstein. We don't. <laughs> well, yeah, it's terrible. But, no, it's just another Ramstein. You know, other other Ramstein. Other uh, halftime show. What a Super Bowl halftime show has to do. I thought it, I thought it checked all the boxes. Honestly, the, the worst Super Bowl halftime show I I remember in the past five years was Maroon Five. I mean, talk about boring, bland, generic white band. Uh, that really? was. I think the best, uh, the, the best, and I guess the past five years was Lady Gaga. That's more than five years ago, but yes, yes, that was very good. Really, that was more than five years ago. Yeah, I, I looked back. It was more. It was more than five years ago. But yeah, that that was good. But yeah, I mean, so I, I will I will take your critique of the Usher thing because I know you're fair about these things, and it just didn't scratch you where your itch, which is fine. 
but the people who I was talking about on social media every year without fail, I was like, oh, all oh, these thugs. Oh, uh, oh, uh, why do they have to have this? You know, in my day, we had the Rolling Stones. You daddy, they're 90. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> and you were saying before about black artists moving the the dial culturally. Honestly, black artists have moved the dial culturally in every decade. And yes, <laughs> yeah, of course, so in their artistry musically. No, but but of course, but like the eighties, rock was really big. Now you still have pop with Madonna, Michael Jackson, Cyndi Lauper, but eighties the rock was re rock was really big. Nineties is really when rap started to take over. You had a little bit, of, you had grunge in the beginning of it, but nineties is where hip hop really started to assert its dominance on popular culture, and it hasn't given it up. To be honest with you, no. I mean, what what do we what do we bring into the party, kids? Ed Sheeran, who I like, I like Ed Sheeran, but I mean, you know, he's not really moving the dial culturally per se. Oh, uh, you know what? You bring out Ed Sheeran, start passing the pillows out. <laughs> Fifteen minute nap. I mean, he's not. I mean, look, he's a good musician. He's got good tunes. He's a big star. Not the most exciting person. No, no, it's like it's like watching the Dave Matthews Band. I mean, I feel like that's what these people want. Can we just trot out the Dave Matthews Band? No, no, we can't because it'll be boring and stupid. <laughs> you know what though? Uh, I I got I got to tell you though, uh, Dave Matthews Band. I I love to see the Dave Matthews Band. He's got the best rhythm section. Mm -hmm. Period. I, the, the drama, the bass, I mean, the best rhythm section, period, are outstanding. Amazing. Not at gunpoint. No. Uh, well, fine. Uh, uh, is, he, is he held hostage in a porta potty? Because I don't want to watch. <laughs> I tell you, uh, with our buddy, uh, when, we were, when you were commenting on your page, you know, everybody was commenting and, you know, about the, the, the thing about, oh, okay, we have to do And I'm like, and I was on our buddy JJ's uh, thing, and I caught it was torture because I, I wrote to her, I go, you know, the biggest thing, I go, it's not like they shooted her up and put her out in the field and she kept on getting incomplete. I go, the biggest thing, and I don't know if it's a rumor, but the biggest takeaway of the Super Bowl, if it's true, how did San Francisco not know that there was different rules in OT at a Super Bowl? Because it's all part of the conspiracy. It's all part of the conspiracy. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift wiped their mind. No, well, here's well, yeah, well, I, I, here's the answer to that. The players didn't know the rule change. The coach did. The, the, the Shanahan knew it. He didn't convey it to his players. So that's just bad coaching. But the, that's the, I go look. I didn't know about the rule. The rule change. However, Dennis was sitting next to me and explained it. I tell dick jokes. I slap my hands on piano keys and I do a podcast. I'm not supposed to know that shit. No. <laughs> So, so here is here is the um here is the conspiracy theory uh, that Joe was alluding to. And can we stop with the Trump delusion syndrome or whatever the hell you people call it? Can we just yeah. stop that you like the right is obsessed where everything they have to shit on everything with politics. Nothing can just be. We can't just watch a football game. So these fucking maniacs. Maniacs think that the NFL is scripted. Yeah, that's why they didn't put the Lions in the Super Bowl. Nobody wanted to see that. Right. Uh, they think the, 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 uh, the NFL is scripted in order for the Chiefs to win and Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey to get together and Tra Taylor Swift was going to announce to everybody to vote for Biden and Joe Biden was going to win, which is a stroke. Of, how does Joe, B for a bumbling old fool, it's amazing how he comes up with all these elaborate plans. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing, Anthony brought a good point up on his show on Monday. He goes, he goes, the thing is, if, if um, Taylor Swift was dating one of the Jets, do you think the Jets this year would wind up in this? Well, I, I posted that. I posted that on Facebook. I didn't hear the show. I go, listen, for all you people that uh, hate seeing Taylor Swift, you know, uh, at important games and, and after winning games, have her date a Jet. She'll never be in an important game again. She'll never be in a winning game again. Have her date a Jet. You will ruin the girl because the because as powerful as Taylor Swift is, she cannot compete with the ugh of my New York Jets. She can't. <laughs> 
I was saying before, full of killers, tripping, all about to I, you know, I'm not watching the game. And she was open three fucking times. Well, Joe, <laughs> now here's where we here's where we got to put you. Here's where we got to put you on the hot seat a little bit, a little bit here, Be, a little bit here. Well, because a lot of these people that believe in these cons this conspiracy theory are the same people that several years ago swore. They would never watch the NFL again because all these players were kneeling during the halftime show. And I and Joe was like, I'm never gonna watch again. And I quietly said, You'll watch. And and and, and the NFL And I still think it's the It doesn't thing. matter what you think. I don't care what you think. You're watching. And the and the Super Bowl did record numbers. They charged record amounts for the commercials because the Super Bowl gambled. They said, Okay, you're you're angry now. You'll be back. You need what we have. And they're right. They were it was the smart whatever you think about what they did, it was the smart move for them because their players is comprised, I would say, about eighty percent African Americans. And and to and now I would say ninety percent of the owners are Republicans. But they decided, you know what, we gotta keep we better keep our players, the ones who make us all this money, happy. And hundred percent of those players are making hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars, and their only idea of struggle is there's no crystal at the club. Okay, well, well I'm not arguing that point again. I'm not... I understand that, but that, you know, so, it, you know... My point it, was, you know, my point was, you and all the ones, you said, I'm never going to watch again, that's it. You came... And I didn't, and I didn't for a while. Nah, you came, no, nah, you came back. You were, we were talking about giants sucking within weeks. You can't quit it. No, I, the NFL knows what it has. They're not stupid. They know they have a great product and that we just can't get enough of it. They know it. We buy their, we buy their stuff. Well, we, we go to the parties. We bet on it. We go to the games. We can't quit the NFL. They know that. So it's, it's hilarious. We go, and, and by the way, you tried to cancel the NFL if you want to do cancel culture. But you can't cancel the NFL. You can't cancel the NFL. It's going to rock the NFL eventually. I don't know when it's going to happen. Who knows? But with all with all the gambling sites, there's going to be a, an instance of a fix sooner or that, later. That, that could be. That could be. That, it's a little too greedy. I agree with you. Uh, can we also talk about one more thing about this hate for Taylor Swift? I don't know what, where, the, where this comes from. That by all accounts, this is a nice human being who takes good care of her fans, who tips her Teamsters, who, who break down her equipment $100,000 each at the end of tours. Yeah, I, I mean, all, all she, now listen, she makes songs about failed relationships like every singer does. From Mozart, who wasn't a singer, but, you know, composed. That's what they do. They hate this woman because she's on TV. She doesn't need to be on TV. She's big enough. The, the the networks are putting her on TV. This hate is ridiculous. And then you hear, I don't remember who this right-wing pundit was, like, well, you can have Taylor Swift because we have Ted Nugent, Kid Rock, and John Voight. Shoot yourself. Shoot yourself. <laughs> That's what you're bringing to the, ta the table against Tay-Tay? <laughs> And none of them look good in a sequin one piece. No, no, stop. Now, I think you're, I think you're underestimating John Voight, my friend. That's a little. <laughs> I can't imagine Uncle Ted running around in a, in a Well, well, Joe, back in the seventies, actually, I could. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, True. you know what, dude? Yeah, you used to run around a loincloth and swing from a rope. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that is on. So, yeah. That is on point. <laughs> but here is the sickness. Here is the sickness with the right. They just can't enjoy shit anymore. They just mm -hmm. can't want. Like everything has to be a conspiracy. Maybe the Chiefs just happen to have the best fucking quarterback of this generation, and by the time he's done, might be the best quarterback of all time. Maybe that, and maybe they have a really, really good coach. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. You know, it's not a conspiracy. He's just that good. It's okay. What do you, what, so what, what's the conspiracy? Well, the conspiracy is that the NFL is scripted. The NFL is scripted. I told you. And the plan was for the Chiefs to win and, and, um, Taylor Swift. And, and and Travis Kelsey, her boyfriend, who's a tight end for the Chiefs and one of the great tight ends of all time, would get together, I guess, during the post game and announce that they're voting for Joe Biden. And then all these Swifties 
nine months from now would remember this because they have strong memories and they're not vapid at all. You know, they're not on the TikTok. You know, they're going to remember nine months from now. They're going to vote for Joe Biden. And by the way, by the way, uh, influence, rock the vote. That shit's been going on forever. What? What? Let's let's pretend it's true. What's wrong with getting Americans to vote? It could, well, it could be because you got all the Swifties who are going to, you know. Okay. You, know, so you know what, Joe? I'm just. I'm no, just, Joe. Here's how you get the Swifties. Don't take away abortion. <laughs> let, me, let, let me just. Let me just say one. Let me. Let me be perfectly clear. <laughs> Not while I'm drinking. Not while. Don't you do a Nixon while I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> with with that, you got you got to hear me out on this. With that being said, that is my take is an overview. Okay. Um, it's it's the same thing with me going. Well, you know the nut that yells in front of Penn Station. <clears throat> He's right. Jesus is coming back on the thirty-four bus down seven. You know, I mean, I I, I just don't even trust guys saying. You know, that's very specific. So I I you know, but you know, a lot of people that are taking that to heart are very far right. It's almost. It's almost as bad as some of the stuff that the far left part. Joe, the, Joe, these are people we know. They have become all consumed. They're never happy. They're always angry. I just don't get it. Like, like I said, I, I, we talked about when Trump was president. I do, like. I don't understand why when Trump was president and they wanted Trump to be president, they were so angry. Like me, me and Pip were not happy during the Trump years. We were not happy, and we probably fetched, and maybe we fetched too much, or maybe we didn't fetch enough. I don't know. Pip and I were not happy. But if you notice, now that Biden is president, we're relatively happy. We're not fetching anymore. You take the wins when you have them, and but these people are always angry. I don't understand. <laughs> You've got you've got people, and once again, this is an overview. You've got people that felt that the the election uh, felt that the election was stolen. You have people that said uh, that uh, uh, January January sixth um, actually was people protesting, and that it got out of hand. There was a lot of FBI there leading them in. You also have people that are paying um, fifty dollars for a bag of groceries. Uh, they're, you know, and they're, they're seeing the borders overrun, migrants overrun. So you have people like that getting a very, you know, a fair Joe, 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 let me, let me I'm going to say something that I've, I've not said before. You were right. The election was rigged and the next election is going to be rigged, too. So don't go out and vote. You're just wasting your time. Show the man. Don't vote in a rigged election. I mean, <laughs> that's the answer. That Don't participate. <laughs> but I, I, I forgot. Somebody was saying uh, at, the, at the day program, we have uh, one of our guys. And he's a very good guy. We, we, you know, we were talking to you know, there's, there's some right wing people that work, you know, by me. We were talking about the, the election and stuff like that. And he said, "Yeah, I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to bother because it's all rigged or whatever." I, you know, and I go, "You gotta vote. You know, you want your day in court. If I can go in, and you know, and circle, 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 put in the little face." No, you're absolutely wrong. You should not give this rigged process credence. Stay home, Mr. Curry. You're better than that. And tell everybody who thinks just like you to stay home, too. That's the right answer. <laughs> It's the fucking stupidest thing. These fucking, I mean, I mean, listen, we're not supposed to say people are stupid, but it's never stopped me before. People are stupid. Like if you are, not you, Joe, not in this case, because you're going to vote. But if you honestly think it's rigged, then what? Then stay home. Don't waste your time. Why are you even participating? If everything is scripted, why are you complaining? You are powerless. The powers that be control everything, and you are just a pawn. So you might as well go along and live your best life the way you can and be happy and not worry about it because nothing you say or do matters anyway. You'd be much happier that way. I mean, it's fucking stupid. If you're not gonna vote, if you're not gonna vote, you can't, you know, you can't bitch because if you don't go out and vote, you don't have a, you know, you know, you were supposed to have your say in the matter and you did not take the advantage of having your say in the matter. Right. And because you just wrote it off because you think, well, it's rigged, but you're still gonna complain how how much stuff sucks. If I go if if I go into the supermarket, once again, everything everything is five five eighty for a jar of fucking mayonnaise. Are you kidding? You gotta wait till it goes on sale, three ninety nine. Well, it used to be two ninety nine on sale. I need mayonnaise today. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but why are people? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Why are people oh. blaming the president for that? Look at the corporations that raised all the prices and then never turned them down. I mean, that's but legitimate. The thing about it is, if they if, if the, if, if, if the can't compete, the price of diesel fuel, the price of agriculture, everything is combining into this. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting everything. Nobody looks into the micro uh, the micro reasons of why this is happening. Uh, the president should have a cabinet or, uh, you know, the minister of uh, people in place. And take okay, okay. One more important, one more, I don't want to, we have this conversation every week. One more important thing about the Tay Tay conspiracy, and then we'll move on. Um, about this whole conspiracy, do they understand how fucking filthy rich this woman is? If she wanted to endorse Joe Biden, she could take out a, a 30 minute promo for Joe Biden on every damn network, and she could just sing songs about Joe Biden and say, Go vote, vote for Uncle Joe. That's what she could do. She doesn't need the NFL after her boyfriend wins the Super Bowl. These people are so fucking stupid. They don't understand who they're dealing with. She's huge. Huge. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Okay, but Joe's not one of those conspiracy theorists. Thank God, Pip. I'd like to give us some credit for that because I think I think if, if Joe was not exposed to us on a weekly basis, he might sink in with those people because that's the majority of the people. No, no, you're, no, you're not. Do you think I look at the booth in the fucking stadium and think Taylor Swift's controlling the world from it? Are you, are you <laughs> Your friends do. Your friends do. Their fucking mind. I'm not gonna sit there and go, hey, you know what? They got a point. Whoops, she's sending a signal out to the 50-yard line. What are you doing? <laughs> Taylor calls for a run. She called a run, you guys. <laughs> Listen to me. We had a long fucking talk about all my issues on the way to the gig Friday night. Oh, boy, howdy. I tell you, I have a lot of them, but that ain't fucking wild. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that. All you right, so let, let, let's, let's, go, let's get to these commercials. Uh, Joe, do you watch the commercials still? I do. Yeah, oh, yeah, a little. I, now, I don't want to be the old man here, but I will. I think the commercials used to be better. I've just, they're just not that good anymore, overall. Very bland. Yeah. Very bland. You know why? Because I don't, I think, the, I think you want to be careful, uh, because everybody picks it apart about the message they're sending, and somebody could get offended. So they just make them bland. Well, here is something I noticed. Um, actually, I didn't know. Somebody else noticed that, and I'm copying, I'm stealing their point. Um. So the uh, so it's thirty seconds, seven million dollars. So what a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of cool movies coming out. But if you want to see the full trailer, you're gonna to have to go to their website. The movies are no longer giving you the full trailer during the Super Bowl commercial. They give you a little taste, and then they tell you to go to the website. That's new. That's weird. Uh, you know, way the way the movie business is now, the way they're competing with you know cable and streaming and everything like that, I think they're trying to you know they, they, they themselves are trying to cut cash. I think it's a good move. Um, I will I will bring this up. I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say we are starting to control the border. And Joe, before you jump down my throat, here's why. I think the security has gotten tighter at the border because this is the first time in years I don't remember seeing a Mexican avocado commercial. Did we always get one? We didn't get the Mexican avocado commercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign that you but, you take. But, but, yep. Going back to the movie thing, if you're if you're you know pushing a movie. You know, you don't know how it's going to do. So instead of spending millions and millions of dollars during the Super Bowl pushing the whole trailer, you just spend a million bucks. You direct people to the website. They can see it there. You just save yourself, you know, probably another three million bucks. Well, they still spent seven million for the 30 seconds, but they didn't make it. They didn't spend 14 million for a minute. Right, 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 right. That, you know, that, you know, the whole, you know. Bud Light, and we talked about this last week, um, and Joe was right about this. If you saw the, if you saw, record that. No, <laughs> listen, every so often, uh, it's a leap year, it can happen. Um, Bud Light <laughs> is clearly going back for the frat boy vibe. If you saw their Bud Light commercial, which just makes the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing. All the more stupid. Like, 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 they just show that they don't have a vision. They don't stand by anything. Just like they came to press. I mean, it's just so. And the problem is, the beer still stinks. I mean, if, <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Listen, I know it makes sense to go to the frat boy vibe because frat boys are the only ones who are going to drink that swill because they don't have a lot of money. I get it. 
what I like to do, what I like to do is I want to change the format of the show. I want to talk for an hour and a half about cars, and then I want to talk about um, a musical instrument for the rest of the show. No, we're not going to do it. Well, why? Because it's not our core audience, and nobody's going to want. That's not what we do. The same with Bud Light. They tried this. That's not their core audience, and they found out a, a several billion dollars later that it's not. They got to. And they got to go back to what's paying the fucking mortgage. The most paradoxical commercial, which I enjoyed, uh, there was a there was a commercial promoting Jesus because that's what I always say. You know, Jesus, nobody ever promotes him, so the Super Bowl is a good time to make people aware because it goes Taylor Swift and Jesus. So they they had um, a Jesus commercial that was preaching don't hate and they show different people that would like be opposed washing each other's feet i think i saw rex ryan there washing the feet of an offensive coordinator but that's just because he has a foot fetish but um anyway uh, so it stop, stop, stop right there um you're working this weekend that goes in the act you gotta put that in the okay. that's gotta go in this weekend yeah you, you got those two you gotta put that in all right no Hip, write that down for me because I, I will forget but um <laughs> So, it, so it, it's a really cool message, uh, you know, that Jesus didn't teach hate. But then, he, then I saw that somebody pointed out. Then again, for seven million dollars, you could really help a lot of people in need instead of doing various people washing their feet and do, doing the Jesus commercial. So, yeah, I mean, I think, but you know what? Yeah, yeah but, but if you're trying to get people to come back to the church, uh, you know, and uh, all denominations. You know, it it was the most watched a TV event in history. Uh, never mind. So you wait, Joe. So you think there was people that didn't know about Jesus until the commercial? <laughs> um, you know what? It's nice to see a message that's different. That's something about you know about the you know the, the genuine goodness that we're supposed to have for each other. Okay. I think the funniest commercials, it's between one of, one of the two. They had a Christopher Walken commercial where he's walking and he's meeting all these different people and they're all doing Walken impressions to him, which as a comic who's been in this game long enough got, knows, oh, yes, they all do Walken impressions. And that was pretty cool to see that. That was pretty funny. That sounds funny. And the other one was the J-Lo, Ben Affleck, Dunkin' Donuts commercial with Tom Brady and Matt Damon. Now, in that commercial, nobody bitched for, about having to pay two extra dollars for oat milk. Uh, they didn't have that in the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But that, that, was a, that was a fun little commercial. Uh, I saw some bit about a little, a little guy that his green, little green butt blew up and it popped and became a... Another little green guy? What the heck was that? That doesn't ring a bell, but it figures you would focus on a butt that blows up. <laughs> That's what Taco Bell. Oh, was it? Oh, wow. Oh. No. <laughs> it, it would be about a butt that, butt that blows up, though. A blood. Now, 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 there was a commercial that put a little tear in my eye. And yeah. I don't know if Super Bowl commercials should be doing it. But I was like, oh, I got the feels. So there's this, there's this girl, she's probably eight or ten years old, and she's at, like, some figure skating competition, and she does really well, and her dad her dad is there. So then, after the competition, they get in the Kia, they set up a speaker and lights, and then on this outside pond, she starts skating around, and inside you see Grandpa watching through the, mirror, the window. I was, I was like, aw, Kia, you scratch me where I itch. Oh, that one. You know, I figured, I thought it was going to be the mom that was there in the wheelchair. That would have been nice. <sighs> I'm not a bitching. I mean, it uh, sounds a little bit like you're bitching. Like Grandpa doesn't get to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was sweet. That was really sweet. So. You know, like I said, it was a sweet commercial, but I'm sitting over my buddy's house. I go, yeah, he should have had like mom there in a wheelchair, but not for nothing. What do I know? <laughs> and then um, I thought I thought the game was pretty good. It, had, it started slow, but it was a good game, conspiracy and all. It was, it was, yeah. All right, last thing I want to talk about before we take our first break. By the way, can I just say one more, one quick thing? I, there was a lot. I went to two Super Bowl parties that night. Show off. There were a lot of San Francisco fans. I and I went to my buddy Mike's house, and then I went to uh, Mini FBI's house. Both. Just one other person drew for KC, 
and you're like public enemy number one. Well, Joe, I mean, here's the thing. Let's be honest. A lot of your friends um, prefer sanctuary cities full of socialism and Pelosi. Let's be honest about it. <laughs> they do. They do. I've seen them. <laughs> that's what that's about, Joe. They they hate America. That's why they're rooting for San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last thing I want to talk about, I had so much to talk about, but we'll take our, we'll take our break. Did, uh, did anybody see uh, the daily show last night? No, no, I didn't get to uh -huh. Jay Stu is back. John Stewart is Stewart is back on Mondays. I was felling. Can I tell you how good he is on that particular show? Now I watched every episode of the Apple show and it was a much more serious show, but man, it just seemed like, the comedy was on point. The jokes were sharper. Everything was better. And he was making fun of both of them, both Trump and Biden. It's like, oh, and it wasn't sanctimonious. It was like, yeah. Now, I don't know if it's still going to scratch everybody's itch. I'm old. They were Trevor Noah. They were going for somebody younger. And I don't know what the fuck they were doing with all these guessos. Uh, and let me tell you something. I thought Trevor Noah was, I, 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 uh, Trevor, you, Trevor Noah to me is humorless. I don't think he's twenty at all. It was a different. It was a different show. You, yeah. you, 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 you know. I prefer John Stewart. It was a different show. It had a lot of heart. It was just a. You know, it was interesting because he was really bringing a lot of black issues to the fore, which we really hadn't seen before. So yeah. it, it was just. It was interesting, and you know what? He handled COVID well when we were all locked in. He was doing it from the house, so that was kind of cool. We were locked. In. It was a different vibe. I mean, Jay Stu. The thing with, Tre like I said, Trevor Noah to me was bland. John Stewart, and there were nights I was watching The Daily Show, and I go, I disagree with your point. Totally liberal fucking uh, take on that. But, but beyond hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm my ass off. Don't get me wrong. You know, so that's the great thing about John Stewart. I don't agree with it. I think he's wrong. But, but Jesus Christ, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, ra he raised the point, and, and other people have raised it too. It is clear that both President Biden and former President Trump are suffering the ravages of time. It is clear. It's not an indictment of either men. They're in their late 70s, early 80s. These are old human beings, and this is the toughest job in the world. It is the Now, I know Donald Trump had executive time, but that being said, it is, it is the toughest job in the world. You're on call 24-7. If something happens across the world, you need to know about it. So... I think, I think either way we're kind of in trouble. I'll take I'll take the guy that um, had it at one point and still has it, but is not what he was off off the guy who's batshit crazy. I'll take that. But it is it is an indictment of this country that this is what we're trying that this is what we're running back again. This is what we're doing. And with the Republicans, they have a real opportunity with Nikki Haley, who I don't agree with at all, but as I've said, is extremely qualified for the job that she is seeking. But she but she loses to none of the to none of the above. She was in a, she was in a primary in Vegas, and not, none of these choices kicked Nikki Haley's ass. You can't lose to none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Who who'd you lose to? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody and everybody. Nobody and everybody kicked my ass. They more than doubled me. That's a bad day. Do you think, Terrible. Do you think that the uh, Democrats are going to try to pull a hail a hail mary late in the game with Hillary Clinton? No. 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 No, because that would give it to Trump again. It was brought up with some of the pundits. Is that you know because you would say well what would they do uh, you know because they're, they're morons think about what you just said we're going we're going to go away from the guy who beat Trump to the only person who could lose to Trump now listen I understand we're talking about the Democrats and anything stupid is possible I understand <laughs> that being said no I don't I don't think they will go to uh to Hillary Clinton as think that we get I don't know how they could run. How they run well, here's how they run him, Joe. I'm going to tell you how they run him. Because you got dumbass, your boy over there, talking about, you know, folks, you know, you just stick a magnet in the water and they're done. That's the end of magnets. And you know what? If they win, they're going to rename Pennsylvania. You got that brain surgeon out there. So that, that that's how they run Joe Biden back. That you know, you know, they got the guy, you know, if they don't pay their bills, you know, I'll, I'll encourage Russia. 
circle well, telling you I like ring things. I mean, I, no, 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 no. It was cookies, and it was on TikTok. Get it correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Joe? Noted, uh, noted, noted, noted. <laughs> Davin, but you said an important thing there is that you know if the if there is a way to shoot yourself in the foot, the Democrats will find it. So there there could be that uh, pulling it out of left field, Hillary Clinton, and then they can shoot themselves in both feet. I it it wouldn't be Hillary happen. It wouldn't. No, here's why. Here's why they said Joe. Uh, Pip Joe. Here's why they said Hillary. You like to talk about Trump delusion syndrome? They got Hillary delusion syndrome. They have. Yeah. They've had Hillary on the brain since the '90s. Nobody's clamoring for Hillary to run anything except a lemonade stand. Nobody. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't hate Hillary, but no. Yeah. Where do you think? Where do you think Michelle Obama is? And like I said, this probably is next to President Obama. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's 7:51. Do you know where Michelle Obama is? That was weird. <laughs> I mean, I think I think she'd be an interesting candidate, but it's not happening this year. They're they're going. They're... You said we're ten months away. <laughs> I do. Listen, I know. I know. Ten away. Now, I I heard, now, anything can happen. Now here's Anything an interesting happen. thing. John Stewart raised an interesting point. Now Joe and I were talking about this. So uh, Joe and I had a long road trip this uh, weekend. So I, I, you know, after the after the disgusting. right, but not what I thought we were going to discuss. But anyway, they had the uh, news uh, about about the uh, deposition with the special counsel on Joe Biden, and they said you know was talking about Biden's memory. To which point oh, I said, Joe, do me a favor, uh, download some posts of uh, Trump's Truth Social. I need something to distract you with. Because I, I, I thought I was just going to get roasted with Biden shit. But here's an interesting thing. So the special counsel talked about Biden's memory. So what John Stewart did was he showed all, all the Trumps, the, the Eric uh, Jr., Ivanka, Donald Sr., uh, in depositions, and and they're like all the times they say I don't recall, I don't remember. They even showed Donald Trump saying I don't remember when I said I have the best memory. So I mean, it's a deposition. That's really what you do. They like Fauci. I was watching Ari Melber. Like when he was deposed, over a hundred times he said I don't recall, and nobody thinks he's losing his mind, whether you like him or hate him. I guess that's what you do in a deposition. So it was kind of unfair. That that's what we were joking. About. Now, John Stewart also had this point about Joe Biden, which I think Joe would uh, like. They, they they say the people that work with Biden, he's sharp, he's commanding, he's on top of things. John Stewart's like, well, why don't you show video of that? If that's really what's going on, why don't you show us that video? We'd kind of like to see that video if it exists. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that, but also when when Biden was giving a press you know press conference, he made the mistake saying that he talked to the president of Mexico about Gaza. He also mentioned when he got upset about his son Mo, he brought up um, uh, something religious. I totally forgot that. Um, he also said, when, you know, keep me as president. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to overturn Roe versus Ward. Uh, <laughs> and and I and I, I'm going to make a joke shit. He said this shit. Joe, so, Joe. So I understand. I understand. And I agree 100%. And if you ran Nikki Haley, that would make total sense. But you have a guy go, if they win, they're going to rename Pennsylvania. What are we doing now? We're renaming Pennsylvania? What is he even fucking talking about? He's talking about magnets and renaming Pennsylvania. And oh, by the way, if you don't pay your bills, Russia invade. And if anybody knows about not paying their bills, it's Donald Trump. I mean, oh, I mean, oh my God. That was a pot call in the kettle black. I went insane. If <laughs> you don't pay your bill. Dude, do you know what you're known for in New York? And his attorneys, he doesn't pay his attorneys either. So yes, Joe. So to to my point, either way, we're kind of screwed. But I'm gonna take the guy who's not nuts, who's 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 not babbling about magnets, who's got a bad memory, and is not malicious. I know it's listen. I both. I wish we had somebody running 30, 20 years younger on both parties. I really wish we do, but we don't for some reason, which I don't know. <laughs> so. I mean, 
and this is the choice we have. I mean, and Joe's going to vote for Trump, and Pip and I are going to vote for Biden. They're not they're... voting on policy now. Back in the now is that is that the key Pennsylvania Pennsylvania policy? Is that the policy you're voting? <laughs> yeah. No, you got to get around the rhetoric. That's the problem. But, you know, <laughs> rhetoric. <laughs> back in back in June, starting in June, and then you know going through the summer, and it's a you know. I, we, we were discussing all this, and I'm like, well, you know what? See me in January when shit starts to get real. Hi, we're in January, <laughs> and now February. Uh, we got 10 months left, and um, this is beyond fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, 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 any, uh, who, who the hell? You know, and I said I will probably have more a concise assessment uh, coming in the beginning of the year. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> See in June. Maybe I'll have it figured out there. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> listen, I mean, I listen. I I, I don't un, I don't understand why none of these other Republican candidates got a snit because it, it's a cult. I understand. I've said it's a cult from the beginning. It's a cult because if you were really looking on policy and getting your a conservative agenda across, you would go Nikki Haley or one of these other people who are competent. Who are competent? Trump is not competent. He's incompetent. He's only running to stay out of jail. But they like the personality. For whatever reason, I don't understand. They like the personality. And Joe Biden, people are like, well, he beat Trump once. Yeah, but he was a little younger then. <laughs> and it's, I don't know. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it is what it is. But anyway, I'm glad, um, I'm glad Jay Stu's back. I, I, I was uh, even if it's Monday nights, and I don't know if it's going to scratch everybody where where they itch. But for me, like I like to say, it was like ah, a nice warm sits bath. This is comfortable. Oh, Jokes that satire that I approve of, lampooning both both sides. Now, do I think it? Do I think it's going to hurt Trump the way I thought of uh, would have in 2015 if he stayed on the job? No, 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 no. It's because everybody who's going to vote Trump is it's baked in. They're going to vote for Trump. I really don't think how anybody knew would vote for Trump. I really don't. I really don't see how he's done anything with his. 91 indictments and ramblings and uh, and sexual assault char, uh, convictions. I, I I don't really say go. Okay, well now it makes sense. I think a lot. I think what it's going to be is people are going to stay home, and who turns out the most people. I think we're going to have a very low turnout. Even though you know, like every election, it's the most important election of our lifetime. I get it. I understand. But I, I think we're going to have a very low turnout because I don't think people are excited. Overall, Overall, about either candidate. About either candidate. No, I don't think so either. And I do think and if I Taylor think Swift won a uh, rant, she would she beat the beat shit out of Trump. Trump. She would crush him. <laughs> Tay Tay all the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Funny. On the break, we got new music from uh, John Carr with Sierra and the Cathodes with Time. And you can learn more about both those artists at Creative and Dreams Music Network. Dot com. When we come back, uh, scamming scammers. All right, kids, this is a nine minute break. So you got got some time. Okay, thanks. What about the one who said he loved you? What about the one who said he cared about you? We'll be here soon. Oh, we play with all this frustration. And you play without a game. It's not a bill that I see ever. You won't tell the Because we the heart of us is Somewhere, 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 
I see Must sky the line of the The keeps turning, getting in. Just 
You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. It's Gavin's dead. It's Gavin's dead. We are back. Gavin's dead. That's where you be. Hope you're enjoying watching us or listening to us or whatever the hell you're doing. Maybe uh, injecting us. Maybe that's what you're doing. Maybe you should inject us. Okay, let's do some... Uh, that went nowhere. Good for me. All right, let's do some scamming scammers. Let's do some... <laughs> yeah, just kind of babbled on. That's what I do. All right, let's... Um, so we're going to pick it up with Jenny Janes. So there's a couple big developments uh, last time with uh, Jenny James. Uh, one, uh, she didn't have a sister. Then she did have a sister. Then she didn't have a sister. I uh, mean, she, she was <laughs> she was confused. So the amazing we, dis disappearing family. Yeah, there was a little uh, chink in the armor um, with that one, and uh, also she made it. Uh, she made it like a, she wanted an old F the old fake dabbing to get involved in this crypto thing. She had mentioned it before, but now this was the first time she'd actually discussed him possibly investing. Right. So let's uh, pick it up with, uh, let me move this far from my face. October 15th, 2022. Uh, so this is 1238 AM. 
and she asked me if I'm asleep yet. Uh, oh my goodness, great! My phone's blowing up from comics who need crap. I said, "No, I'm I." I go, "No, I'm wide awake." And then I say, "No, I'm wide awake." So then at ten thirty, she waits till twenty thirty to res to respond. I'm like Elon, who can't get enough of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's trying to wake you up, honey, honey. It's time. <laughs> yeah, I just, just imagine. I, I imagine bed next to Elon. He's shaking me. Are you asleep? Can we talk about the investment? Are you asleep yes, yet, sir? <laughs> sir, I, it's very important we talk about the investments. <laughs> Not now, Elon. Ten, let the dog out. Anyway, uh, so ten thirty, <laughs> she goes. Um, good morning. I say good morning, Jenny. She asks how my day was. I go. So far, so good. Another late night ahead. How was your morning? She goes. Is it that late in New York? I go. No, I mean tonight. I'll be up late coming back from work. So if you wanted to talk to me, I will be up. Um, she asks if I have any plans for this weekend. Oh, by the way, Pip. Uh, five years from now, when we when we do uh, one of my uh, one of my current uh, scamming scammers, uh, I called one uh, in the car while while Joe was in the car with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, fascinating. No way! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's <No> way. great. <laughs> anyway, I'll continue. So uh, I go. I'm working tonight and closing my pool tomorrow. Any plans for you? October fifteenth. I'm closing my pool. Jeez, did we stall? Were we were we expecting a Native American summer or something? What the hell's wrong with us? Yes. <laughs> yes. She goes close the pool. She goes. I'm going shopping. I go. I have a pool at my house and I need to close it for the season. I will open it in the spring. She goes. Is that is that a big swimming pool? She goes. Yes. You should clean the pool and wait until the summer to open it. I'm glad I'm going to her for pool advice. Thanks. Couldn't have thought of that myself. Thank Thanks. How, how much stock could I throw in? <laughs> Good for you, Joe. You know your pool language. Good for you. Ann was in the pool business, so I know all the language. Oh, right. right. I go, I feel very, I go, Yankees, I don't care. I'm getting all these notices. I um, I go, I feel very weird about yesterday. I know there was a misunderstanding, but now I want, now I don't want to ask you questions because you take it like an interrogation when it is honestly just trying to learn about you. Add to that, you don't wish to have a video chat anytime soon. And I am confused as to how exactly I am to proceed with you. And then I talk about the plug. Oh, it's a pretty good size. I need to winterize it so I, so it can handle the ice and snow. Putting on the cover is a pain because it's a big cover for a big pool. She goes, do you need to work? Do you need to work on your own or do you hire a worker to do the work for you? Now, is she? this is like real conversation here. Yeah. yeah. And like she seems almost interested in you. Which kind of throws me because then you go, well, this is a real human being. Yes. I go both. Tonight I'm working for someone else. No comment about what I wrote about feeling weird. She goes, you think too much. Uh, which is something Joe, I'm sure, would disagree with. But uh, she... <laughs> you don't think enough, boy. <laughs> Use your thinker, boy. <laughs> Better show up as a sack of wet night mice, boy. I'm doing Joe's impressions for him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I just ah, continue. I just relax. Been a rough day. Hey, Joe, just sit back, sit back, and relax, and I'll do your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she goes, you think too much. She goes, I think sometimes you don't need to think so much. I mean, who helped you shut down your pool? Now, if you think about it, she wouldn't want me to be a thinker because she's going to want me to invest with her. And not overthink it. <laughs> yes. Thinking would just get in the way of this scam. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> I go, I am an artist. I do think a lot, but you are the one who overthought my question. A friend who lives nearby will help me. I go, you said I am interesting. I'm guessing you would find me rather dull if I wasn't a thinker. At this point in life, I doubt I will change much, and I don't want someone who wants me to change all that much. And I know you like me. She goes, that's good. You have a friend like that, and I'm happy for you. Yes, we, we, we people always have ideas. I mean, you don't always think about the bad. I think our life should be optimistic. I go, Jenny, you thought badly of me saying I was interrogating you. I agree about being optimistic. I tend to be a positive person, except when I'm feeling negative. She goes, yes, only positive people can become stronger and stronger. That's not true. That's not true. Joe, close your ears for a second. I don't think Donald I don't think Donald Trump's very positive at all, but he became president of the United States. So yeah, I mean, really. Exactly. Positive, positive people can be stronger and stronger. That's what gives you the initiative to be. No, no, but no, but she said only positive people. I'm saying you don't have to be positive to become stronger. It could be anything. True. 
I mean, I don't think I don't think Putin's all that positive. He's positive he's going to kill people and people are going to fall out of balconies. I don't think he's a positive guy, though. <laughs> and, and, and who's that? Putin. Oh. I go, are you looking are you looking to be like a big old monster, big and strong? I go, that is some thinking you put out right there. I think we are both thinkers. She goes, she laughs, she goes, I'm a mighty alien. So this is kind of like like conversations like that, you think maybe this isn't a scammer. Oh I, I don't understand what just happened about the alien. What what? Well, because she's talking about bigger becoming bigger and bigger. So she says I'm a mighty alien. Oh, okay. All right. I that to which have... Joe says, if we had a wall, you never would have gotten into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We should build a wall around the planet so we don't get invaded. <laughs> well, you know what? That's what Space Force is for, young man. Oh, that's right. We don't really talk about Space Force anymore. It's still a thing, though. They're there. I don't know what they do. Yeah, that's a good point. What are they, like, putzing around? Like, just moving the moving the papers on their desk waiting for an assignment? You don't hear about you know, maybe maybe it's very covert with everything that's you know, with things we don't know with satellites. You know, uh, no, but I mean, you don't hear anything about it. You still hear about NASA. You, you don't hear about Space Force. It's kind of weird, but anyway. Because they're busy sending drones over Area Fifty One and trying to learn their ways. Okay. I go. I like you and all, but aliens are into anal probing. If you try that, I will have to destroy your home planet. <laughs> Not a fan of the anal probe, son. Um, after a couple of drinks. <laughs> well, Valentine's Day's coming up. <laughs> a fan of the anal, anal probing there? <laughs> oh, wow. I think he is. You know, <laughs> rumor has it, if he would have had a different couch, he would have been anally probed. <laughs> Move this console. I want to probe you, Joe. <laughs> Reminds me, I got to schedule my checkup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time for the pipe. <laughs> so I go. Uh, I go. If you try that, I will have to destroy your home planet. To which she goes, "My gosh, this is absolutely impossible. I will destroy you on behalf of the stars." LOL. <laughs> yeah. So we're seeing a sense of humor from Jenny. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's better than her going. You're just, you know, giving me the third, the no, the third degree. Is it the third degree? Yeah, it is, right? Um, it's, she was being all defensive about you asking anything about her, and now she's like, hee hee. So I go, so in order to save myself and not anger the stars, I must let I must let you anally probe me? Today has taken an unexpected turn. Yeah. <laughs> Over onto your tummy. She goes, yes, I like peace, LOL. I go, I never knew peace was achieved through my rear end. Clearly, I've learned something. No. Yeah, I think we might have a title for the segment. What? No peace is achieved through the rear end. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that that's Mount Vesuvius over there. <laughs> she laughs. She goes, you're right, but I think the world would be a better place if everyone gave a little love to it. I go, I agree. The world needs more love and more of my rear end. In my pants, I have the power to move worlds. <laughs> She laughs. She goes, this sounds, she laughs. She goes, this sounds very ridiculous. I go, how dare you? Clearly you do not comprehend the power I have in my pants. <laughs> well, at least they, you guys are, you know, making some jokey jokes and, and, and getting along. I like this part. Yeah. She goes, what do you mean by this? I go, our conversation about my rear and world peace. What did you think I meant? She goes, I have no idea. I go, okay. Did not mean to lose you in the conversation. Ah, now I can see how that can be taken another way. <laughs> she goes, you don't have to explain to me. I go, you said, what do I mean? So I did have to explain. And then um, I ask her what she's doing tonight. She goes, she goes, your words strike me as strange. I rarely go out at night. Okay. She's a day walker. <laughs> well, she was, I don't think that that was supposed to be together. She was answering two different things back to back and it came out weird. Oh, maybe, maybe. I go, why do my words strike you as strange? Strange in what way? She goes, what does a lot of power in your pants mean? I am a conservative woman. <laughs> really? That's what she said. Oh. Now, Joe, 
I think a conservative woman would be fine with power in the pants as long as it was my power was used with fossil fuels. <laughs> as long as the power of the pants is, is used in, in a very sober way, she should be fine with it. I have cons- I have a natural gas in my pants. That is how my the pants and my power is fueled. <laughs> I go, just in line with our alien conversation, I go, it could be taken as sexual, but that was not what I was saying. If we are in the same place, will you go out at night with me? I'm a bit of a free spirit and not conservative. Is that a turn off for you? She goes, I am a very conservative person. I rarely go out at night. Now, this is different than the um the African ones who just can't wait to jump on F day on fake day. Yeah, and, and so the yeah, she she wants a, a wide berth. <laughs> yes. I go, I understand, but what I wanted was to take you to di- but if I wanted to take you to dinner or a show or dancing, would you allow me to take you out? She goes, Of course, when we're friends, we can of course go. I go, oh, okay, good. She goes, You haven't bought your phone yet? Now remember, she wants me to get a phone so I could download an app to load the wallet. Now, of course, I don't want to do that. Because I don't want to take in, I don't want to download the crypto wallet. No, and and it was subtle, but did you notice that she just friend zoned you again? Of course, we much- know, we're friends. I I try not to focus on that. It hurts. Good idea. Yeah, because you're an evil. Uh, well, you know what you are. Yeah, I know what I am. <laughs> Nobody else knows what you are, but you know what you are, and that's what matters. Fairly certain. Yes. She goes, you haven't bought your phone yet? I go, nope. She goes, why? I go, be busy. Why do you ask? She goes, because chatting here is too much trouble. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, she wants she to, get- try to get you into another venue. Yes, where, the, where they don't have the rules that this has. Oh, my, how quickly things have changed. Yeah. Why are you rubbing your hands like an evil genius when you say that? Because <laughs> uh, I got to pick up my Yeti cup and I don't want to drop it. Yeah, I'm going to get it. I thought you would have a netty cup. Thank you. I'll be here. I'll be here all the week. That's the cup that you should have. You know what you did sipping like that. I'm going to take a sip. Get your act together, Mister. <laughs> oh God. I go, sorry, I haven't had the chance. If I'm not worth the hassle, then I guess we can't chat. She goes, why do you say that? You mean I can facil- I can facilitate you and you can't facilitate me? I go, I'm just saying, I don't I don't have the phone and you said chatting here is a hassle. I go, I, go, I don't want you to feel burdened. She goes, yes, you can make me buy a new phone without the burden. I believe you can do it. I go, Jenny, I've been busy. I work. I volunteer at a homeless shelter and I'm a big brother. If the phone has to be bought now, then then it is what it is. I'm making myself a better person. How are you making yourself a better person? I'm a big brother. I have a homeless. Sh- I, I go to a homeless shelter. I don't have time to da- get a new phone. Oh, I say, I say. I'm helping humanity, damn it. <laughs> she goes, I'm not saying buy it now. You can get it done in these days. I go, I will when I can. But when you say it, it is a hassle. It makes me feel badly. She goes, no, I just told you my thoughts. I go, I know, Jenny. I'm I'm not doing it to make your life hard. I have a lot going on. Maybe it is why I don't have a woman. She goes, Yes, you should think you should think for me from my point of view. I go, then go if it is a problem. And uh that's where we'll end it. Wow. Okay, so get it it got a little bit a little bit rougher by the end of that. So go. Yeah, like 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 we were cutesy there for a while. Yeah. But it's getting a little testy. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little combative with her. Combative? Combative? No, I don't no, know. You, you, you're close with the words, dear. Combative, combative. Combative, thank you. I added some extra. For spice. But she hasn't really put a full port. I mean, so she's friend-zoned me, which takes away her leverage to get me to get this phone. You'd think, right? I mean, she you'd think that she wants you to be all in yeah like she should be like i guess these asian um scammers they don't want to entertain that type of thing because maybe the culture is more conservative maybe business is business but i mean if if you wanted me to get this phone you would pitch a little woo yeah i mean do they expect you to be like sitting there going okay we're pals let's make this really antiseptic and somehow I would say that, you know, all the, the nice small talk that we've been listening to for the past seven minutes would be kind of a fair way of pitching woo to you. Wow. 
wow, they're bad at that. <laughs> yeah. They need a relief poo with pitcher, uh, woo pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, no, no. Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't even, <laughs> I just got that. Um, <laughs> take your yeah, time here. We'll wait. They definitely need some some help in this area because it, they're awfully dull about uh, trying to arouse your loins so that you will be all in. But there, David just said it could be a cultural thing. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you can make the argument that like I'll be intrigued. So if I want to spend more time to get to know her, I'll get the phone. Yeah, I suppose. No. I like my scammers to be whores. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I don't I don't have time for this. If Pip doesn't get her sexy talk, she she harumps and goes home. I am unsatisfied. <laughs> so Joe, what do you think of the progress of her trying to get me to commit to this uh crypto scam? She's well, like I said, she's using a lot of small talk. Uh, to get there, and also making you um, kind of questioning, is this person real? Is this person generally interested? She's buttering you up to bring you in. She's buttering you up. It's like making small. You like when you have a business meeting, all right, and you're going to make a pitch about something. And I'm sure when you went to, you know, pitch your project, you didn't just go right into the whole pitch. You, you made a little small, it's a nice day today. I say, oh, I see you're into the Yankees, blah, blah, blah. And then you get down to business. That's what you, she was just doing with you. And now she's trying to get down to this pitch. Yeah. Do you, do you, Joe, do you like this approach better or, or the whores better? Uh, this, this approach is a little bit. I like this approach because you don't know when the shoe is going to drop. Okay. All right. I want the whores. I'm with you, Pip. Give me, a, give me a good whore with bad English. <laughs> it's really, it's really all I'm looking for in an online romance. I did. I, I was talking to somebody on a face, like she's her real self on Facebook. I didn't realize it was a scammer, but she, I don't. She did ask me for money, but she's Nigerian. But like I was asking about her kid, and then she said, "Well, I'm like, well." She, because she said Happy Lover's Day. I'm like, oh, happy. That's a cool word for it. But then she said, like, she was raped in secondary school. I'm like, wow. Like, I don't know if that's real or not. And then she's like, well, you're you're making you're reminding me of that. You're bringing up my past. I'm like, I'm not. I've been nothing but nice. But I'm like, maybe we shouldn't talk anymore. I don't think we should talk anymore. And then she said no. Later on, she responded no. And I go, what are you saying no to? It's very weird because I'm getting these people that they're, they're from Nigeria, but they have this different approach. She asked me for money a long time ago, and I never gave it to her. But I don't know what to do with this. I don't real. I'm still completely deceitful. I do not tell her, you know, about my wife and my daughter and all that stuff, because I know my wife likes to be private, and I don't want them. I mean, if she pokes around on my Facebook long enough, she'll say. But they could have died in a car crash, you know, as is wont to happen. But <laughs> <laughs> that's been happening all over the place for you. <laughs> it really does. All right. Let's um, let's thank some folks, and then uh, we'll gear up for our Valentine's Day Love Fails countdown. We would like to thank Sensei Russ Fredico for his continued support. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Russ. Thank you, Mr. Russ. Out all the years, you've always been by our side. So thank you very much. What a fellow. First town in New Jersey's most exclusive fine dining Italian restaurant. Tuscan Villa setting will make you feel like you've been transported to the old country. And every dish is prepared with care and attention to detail. And the Portobello Chef, if it's needed any dietary needs, every drink, every meal, it's not just a visit, it's going to be an experience. And Portobello, they're open for lunch and dinner, Monday through Saturday. And on Sunday, Portobello features the sun with lunch, in addition to the dinner menu, which is available all day. Friday, Saturday night, Portobello features live and running at 9 p.m. Portobello Bank, now that's your destination, that's your event. Eric Mann, John Conti, and Debbie Bazin. It's going to be a fantastic show. Call 201-222-2222. 
So I was putting productions, they're the ones who put together these great comedy shows. Need a comic for a restaurant, a fundraiser, a birthday party, business event, give us a call. 551-404-3094, 551-404-3094, and of course, SidesplittingProductions.com. Joe, you be anywhere? Yeah, I'll be in the Google room at the Governor's on uh, this coming Saturday, the uh, 17th. So come on out, go to Governor's.com for tickets and information. Also running concurrently, uh, Adam Ferrara will be at Governor's White House. So it's going to be a fun night Saturday night. I don't know if I'm in the show with Adam, but nonetheless, I'll be hanging out, and it'll be fun. So come on and join us. How do you not know if you're in the show? It's this week. I know. Sometimes these short book you. I just put out my avail. Maybe I'm in the show. Maybe I'm doing a guest spot. Maybe I'm not. Oh, so, you, oh, so you're not featuring. I thought you were his feature. It depends. You know, Adam likes to spread it around. Like, you know, Matt Burke. Yeah. He'll get a spot to show that, you know, that they, engage. Then, you know, then it's my turn. He, he shuffles it around. Gotcha. All right. Friday, February 16th, I'll be in Morristown, New Jersey at the Jockey Hollow Bar and Kitchen. That show is sold out, kids. Um, yeah, you can't even get reservations anymore. Like, I clicked on the thing to get the information. Like, ha! Huh, they took away the event. So, mm -hmm. you, you'll have to line up outside. You go, please, please let me in. And you go, no, no, you can't come in here. You had your chance. <laughs> come away. You did not fall in time. Yes. Come on, you. Yes. <laughs> so, but you never know. Maybe they'll do like a concert, and they'll really like some of these big. They release some last minute tickets. Maybe you could, maybe you could watch the show from backstage. You could see my <laughs> rear end. <laughs> yes, but you you have obstructed you, view. <laughs> yes. Are you are, are you headlining? I am. Why don't you feel like what Billy Joel does? Why don't you go around the back of the bar and and then some, bring some people up front. <laughs> 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 all right joe uh, i will i will do that and if the venue questions me i'll say well this is what billy does <laughs> yeah i'm just like billy joel i am just like billy joel all right on uh saturday february 17th i'll be in sparta new jersey at the sparta avenue stage for tickets go to uh sparta hyphen avenue hyphen stage hyphen square dot site wow this okay. is sparta yes <laughs> So that'll be in a, that'll be in a nice theater setting. So yeah, check that out and uh, lots of stuff to promote. Gavin comes in on a Gavin comes in on a chariot. <laughs> look at him! Look at him! Goes, that would be cool. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah, he was warming up to the idea. I could tell. I, I I like your approach. I thought I was gonna have to dress as a horse and see if I could sneak in. <laughs> All right. On the break, we got new music from Macy with Work It and Alice Francis with Mr. Jones. You can learn more about both those artists at khb-music.de. When we come back, the 2024 Love Fails Countdown. All right, guys. This is five-minute break here. Yeah. Bye. Right.
What? I hear I hear you humming yeah. <laughs> to that song. Catchy little tune. All right, this one's ten minutes. Let's see how All we right. do this. First time we've ever done this with a clock. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, here we go, dude. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, we've established we're going. I'm glad. I okay. Gonna, I was going to ask you how we're going to do this. I guess it's a game time decision. All right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to. I don't know how to plan it out. We're going to figure it out. I know, yeah. I, know, I, know. I mean, reading a five minute story is not optimal. I mean, if we could condense, that would be good. But we'll yeah. figure it out. Well, we'll see. Yeah, all right. Well, all right. It is what it is. You know. All right. Uh, ten minutes on the clock. Here we go. It's Wrecking Ball Radio. Shut up and it's a pain. There's no rules. There's no rules. Holy sh... It's amazing. I see our sarcasm and nothing is gross. It is. It's Davin's dent. Good evening, everybody. You are listening... To Davin's Den, yes, Davin's Den, the show that is better than having a romance scammer who wants to see other people. I mean, really. <laughs> There's no loyalty in a scam about romance. Where can you find loyalty? <laughs> I am your host, Davin Rosenblatt. I am joined by Joe Curry. Hello, how's everybody doing? Glad to be here. Hi, Joe. And Pip Helix. Hi, everybody. Hi, Pip. All right, so this is... a. Uh, Gee, it's been a long time since we've done this on Terrestrial Radio, but we're going to do it now. We're going to do our annual Love Fails Countdown. Um, we're going to try to get this in over the course of the show. Well, we will get it in. Um, basically, with the Love Fails, we we each pick three stories throughout the past calendar year from last Valentine's Day till now. 
of of love gone wrong. It just it just did not work out. We each and we have three a three a two and a one one being the worst story. And we each bring our our story and then we got to hash it out to see which is the worst one. For that slot. So here we go. Very competitive. And in order to, and to do this, I have a new Love Fails medley this year so of uh, oh. independent artists. So uh, play that in the background of this. Here we go. All right. So I will I will kick us off. I will do the first story, then uh, Joe, and then Pip. All okay. right. So let me just turn that down a little bit. A little bit. All right. So Casey was excited to marry her fiancé, Alex. That was until she received an anonymous text the day before the wedding. They'd been together for six years, and she had, and she th she thought she found her one. But the message changed everything. Dun, dun, dun! According to Tyla, Casey was celebrating in a hotel room with her friends and saw her phone light up. Thinking it would be a message of well wishes or congratulations, she turned it over but saw something totally different. There was a series of screenshots of text in her, in her uh, text between her fiance and another woman. Her heart sunk as she flicked through the countless conversations and saw selfies of the two of them together from two months, even days before. From months, even days before. Your body is effing incredible. Do you know? Do you, and do you know how to use it? Read one text. I wish my girlfriend had the skills you do. Said another. I've never had this kind of connection before. Said a third. Then this weekend, you and I. It's on hot stuff. Bring your A game, to which I say, ugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of the some of the message were, were also arranging weekend getaways and trips together. At first, she felt completely broken. Her world and was slipping away in front of her eyes. But her wedding, her wedding was mere hours away, and she had to make a decision. She decided to sleep on it and decided on a course of action in the morning. In the morning, Casey said, I woke up the girls and told them my decision. I was going to go ahead with the wedding as expected and out him in front of her, our friends and family. There will be no wedding today, Casey announced while standing in front of the altar. It seems... Alex is not who, who I thought he is. Her fiancé and her family and her friend were all speechless. She then went on to read out the damning text. With each word, more color left Alex's face, Casey recalled. I let my weeping eyes rise and meet his, and he had not one thing to say. He stalked out of the church with his best man trailing behind him and, and his family looking on horrified. I love all of you, and as horrible as this is, I'm glad you're all here. There will be no, there will be a wedding reception today, but instead there will be a celebration of honesty, finding true love, and following your heart even when it hurts. According to a friend's Facebook post about the day, everyone except two of Alex's friends and brothers joined Casey for the reception, and they all had a blast. All right, here's why it's a love fail. You're cheating on your fiancé. It seems like the woman who sent the pictures is also the person you're cheating with. So your your new lover can't keep her yap shut. That's a that's a love fail right there. And, and your family doesn't even love you enough to leave the wedding. They're like, ooh, open bar. Thank you. No, we'll stay. Thank you. <laughs> that exactly. is that is a triple love fail. Nobody loves <laughs> this guy. He is unlovable. All right, Joe. What do you got? There was a guy uh, that was in a relationship for a while. And then what happened was in a relationship, somebody parts their way into their life. This person loved the person he was with, but the person, other person, kept being persistent and persistent and persistent. Very toxic. And then at one point, this one person said they will leave because it was not leave the other person and didn't want to have a baby. Why would he want to have a baby? So this person... All right, Joe, just stop with this person. This is you. Stop. <laughs> We're going to go with the way it is. <laughs> okay. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Go on. Oh, this person, this person, the girl left this person and swapped him totally. They ain't never going to talk to him again. Meanwhile, the regular girlfriend comes over the house and hasn't been there for a year, but has an inkling what might be going on. So the girl that hasn't been there for over a year is there. The girl that said she would never call again decides to call. What does this guy do? Comes up with the bright idea that she will call this girl back and let the two girls talk with each other. <laughs> It does not go well. One tells the other one that they can drink gasoline. The other one is still to this day upset they were told to drink gasoline. <laughs> one, the one girl is gone, gone forever, and the other.
the girl is still there keeping the guy on a very, very short leash. And every time they're together, he feels like he's in the witness stand. And that is a love tale. <laughs> Pip, what do you have? Oh, Evan's woman charged with assaulting husband who fell asleep before birthday sex. Huh. An Evans woman was arrested Wednesday after allegedly assaulting her husband because he fell asleep before having birthday sex with her. The woman was charged with battery, family violence, according to Columbia County Detention Center records. Um, I, why won't this go? <laughs> okay. Uh, just just after 4.30 a.m. Wednesday, Columbia County Sheriff's deputies respond to an Evans home for a family violence call. When deputies arrived, the woman told them that it was her birthday and her husband was supposed to have given her a sexual favor, but he fell asleep instead, according to an incident report. She told deputies she became angry and hit her husband with her phone, causing cuts on his face, according to the report. She said she called the sheriff's office after her husband pushed her away and she hit her head on the corner of the nightstand. The husband admitted to deputies he did not give her any sexual favors because he was tired, according to the report. He said in addition to the phone incident, his wife hit him in the side of the head with her hand. The husband said he tried to push his wife away so she could not continue hitting him, according to the report. EMS arrived, examined, and released the couple. Deputies determined the wife was the primary aggressor and took her to the detention center. Now, this is a big fail because, number one, give your spouse some birthday sex, would you? Number two, if they don't, you are completely legally allowed to hit them upside the head. Wow. Okay. That's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> that, so that's my first number three love fail. All right. Well, first... First, we must disqualify Joe for a on a couple of points. One, uh, there's a lot of mental illness involved in that story. <laughs> so, so well, how could you tell from just the story? I don't know. I have a sixth sense about this. Okay. And, and two, it's not a love fail because it's been love rekindled. So while 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 one is no longer in his life, he is rekindled with his with his one true love. I'll take the I'll take the loss because I had to throw that story okay. in there. <laughs> okay. Hey. I had a limit. I'm a, I I got to put it in the shelf. Okay. Fair enough. I, I think that it, it was rekindled because maybe he likes being on a short leash. You know what I'm saying? You know what Kinky. I'm saying? Kinky. And uh, and, and I got to go against Pip here. Eh, it's more like failure to launch. It's not really, eh, not really a love fail. I mean, it is. But, but but mine is much more epic. I think mine is more epic. How bad, like at the at the altar, every, all all your dirty deeds get revealed, and nobody stands with you. I mean, that's a pretty epic fail. Even the girl who you who you has this amazing body who knows how to use it, she goes, eh, not for nothing. This is gonna blow up in your face. <laughs> you know what? Normally, I would fight to the death with this, but. The fact that his family stayed and partied while he left in shame just really does it for me. All right, I'm on the board. <laughs> All right, we come back. More of this. Good job, kids. Okay, look at that. All right, um, this one will be uh, nine minutes. Okay. And we will have, um, I will have Joe, uh, let's see, who should go first? So Joe should end this. So Pip will go first, I'll go second, Joe will go third. Nine minutes, nine minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You could have named some people. You could have given them names, Joe. This person, this person. It was very hard to follow if we didn't live it. <laughs> well, there could have been the cat and yes. the Dog on the short leash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very funny. And they did fight like cats and dogs. Good point. <laughs> I do um, like that you included that, Joe. Oh, that was good. I, I like that. It was it was inside, but it was great. It was. It was. I I had to take the loss, but I, I had to do it. I had to do it. Don't worry. I'm sure there'll be an angry phone call later. <laughs> About all of us. Yes. Yes. But whatever. 
But I stand by my mental illness comment, by the way. On both ends? <laughs> Every which way possible. <laughs> <laughs> three-way split. <laughs> It's a it's a mental illness three way the kinkiest type of mental illness you can have. All right, this is nine minutes. So who did I say goes for? I said Pip, then hey. me, then Joe. Nine minutes. Here we go. John yeah, Here we go. It's Wrecking Ball Radio. This is Davin's Den. <laughs> We are back. You are listening to Davin's Den. We are doing our 2024 Valentine's Day Love Fells uh, countdown. I'm on the board with the third biggest love fail, although Joe poured a little bit of himself to the show, which which was nice. It was like it was the most discreet Joe's been about that in months, but still, nonetheless. All right, let's continue. It wasn't a love fail, yeah. You know, it was certainly of... a love fail. All right, uh, let's continue. Uh, Pip. Start us off. Story for number two, biggest love fail of the year. Number two, when love goes dark. After, after wife refused to cuddle him, husband stabbed her to death in front of their five-year-old daughter. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, love goes dark. Moses Sanchez stabbed his wife, Veronica Cortez Rosales, to death in front of their five-year-old daughter, police said. Um... A Nevada husband stabbed his wife to death in front of the five-year-old daughter, sorry, because the victim had refused to cuddle with them, authorities said. Moses Sanchez, 53, allegedly told investigators that he harbored suspicions that Veronica Cortez Rosales, 43, was having an affair. And yet he admitted he had no evidence to prove this, according to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department statement and probable cause, cause affidavit. He explained that they agreed that they would not have sex and would live together and remain friends for the kids officers wrote he further admitted that if veronica had responded to his affection in bed he would not have killed her sanchez allegedly told cops that he and cortez rosales had been married <laughs> since 1999 and he claimed that she started acting differently three or four months before and that he believed that she was having an affair with a co-worker at mcdonald's uh, uh, not mcdonald's Love at the fry machine. <laughs> Moses could not articulate why you want, he. You want my Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, let let me give you a fry with that shake, girl. <laughs> <laughs> my shake brings um, flies to the yard. Oh wait. Oh. Moses could not articulate why he believed she was having an affair, other than she was acting differently and she was not affectionate with him anymore. Maybe she's sick of your dumb ass, police wrote. He further explained that she... Police would... wrote, maybe she's sick of your dumb ass? No, he did not. I put that in. <laughs> he further pretty, explained... Pretty loose police department. <laughs> I know, really. They have to edit these reports. They're official business. He further explained that she would be texting on her phone late at night and he knew that she was not communicating with her family. Moses said he took her phone by force in the past and she became very nervous, but he denied ever going through with it. Going through with what? I'm not sure. Um, so, uh, sorry, I have to skip this thing. Um, Sanchez allegedly admitted spying on his wife and her co-worker, but he found no proof of the affair. On Friday, he borrowed a friend's car to watch Veronica's car so no one would recognize his vehicle. But when Veronica left her work, work shift, she went to her car, sat there for about five minutes, and drove off. Sanchez allegedly said that at some point that evening, he made up a story about his car breaking down. And when he asked her to pick him up, she did not believe him and instead refused. They argued about it. Before he got into bed, he retrieved a hunting knife, which he kept in a drawer next to the bed. Then he put it in a trunk on the side of his bed, he allegedly told them. And according to documents, Sanchez described that his wife was between him and their daughter with the daughter closest to the drawer. He got into bed while Cortez Rosales had her back to him. Sanchez allegedly said he tried to hug her, but she pushed him away. He attempted a second time. She refused him again. So Moses lost it and he grabbed the knife from the trunk and he stabbed his wife in the back. Moses said she tried to scream, but he didn't let her. I don't know how that happened. 
He said he told her to shut the F up because she would wake the kids. Ah, one's right next to you. Getting on his knees, he stabbed her again, this time in the front, he said. Moses saw Veronica's blood was spreading onto his daughter. So he picked her up and he covered Veronica's body with a blanket. He changed his daughter into different pajamas and put her back to bed to sleep in her own bed, which was also inside the bedroom. He allegedly said he washed the knife in his hands before placing the knife back on a pillow in the bedroom. And he called a friend and he told him, I effed up. Documents said, when the friend arrived, Sanchez allegedly told the man what he'd done. The friend went to the bedroom, saw the body, took the child to another room. Good thinking. Moses further admitted that approximately one week ago, he shot his son's 9 millimeter Glock through a pillow in the bedroom he watched The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, in which a gun was fired into a pillow, which acted as a silencer. And Moses said he just wanted to try it. He denied that it was any type of premeditation or threat towards Veronica. Sanchez, however, allegedly admitted that the attempted cuddling and the fabricated story of the broke-down car were simply tests. So, this is a huge love, love, uh, love fail. First of all, Gronk is screwing her around with the the fry cook at McDonald's, which is always a bad idea. Secondly, she was trying to play it off like she's talking to family in the middle of the night texting. No, nobody does that. They're always talking to their secret lover. Number three, this guy, he had his ideas about what was going on. He had absolutely no proof, but he decided to keep a hunting knife by the bed just in case she wouldn't cuddle. And then she did not cuddle. So this is a big old love fail. Joe, I would submit to you that Pip would have been better served submitting this story for the Father's Day worst dads. The stab uh, stabbing the mom with the daughter in the bed, I feel is much more for worst dads than it is for this. I feel like Pip chose the wrong show. Um, <laughs> they can also choose the right show. And I thought, you know what? I thought the uh... I thought murder wasn't allowed. I no, thought... no, that's allowed. No, we just don't murder kids. Oh, but... no, he's right for the Father's Day. Joe is right for the... No, no, you can murder somebody else. You can't kill the kids. Yeah, you can't kill kids, but you can... Oh, go ahead and kill your spouse. Yeah, oh, sure. sure. 18 and over to die, Joe. All right. <laughs> 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 rules, rules are rules. Rules are rules. Men have died. And in this story, so have women. And... 18 years and older. <laughs> sure. You know, 18 in life, but life ends now. All right. Uh, my... side in this story. Yes. A Massachusetts mother allegedly poisoned her husband's soup at the urging of, wait for it, an online scammer, user, online user claiming to be soap opera star Thurston K in a sinister catfishing scam. You need to know the show. <laughs> Roxanne Doucette was charged with attempted murder after she was turned in by her own daughter who found messages from Kay instructing the 64-year-old to off her husband so they could be together. Her daughter, Nicole Heath, was going through her mom and the scammer's messages and the person convinced her to send $8,000. But the mother claimed her innocence when questioned by a reporter. What they say is wrong because I'm a wonderful cook. My son's going to culinary school. I learned from the best, my mom, Doucette told the local station and i did not try to poison my husband her 73 year old husband paul who said spent days in the hospital after eating the tainted soup uh as roxanne and the couple's daughter sat by his hospital bed the latter was going through her mother's phone to take screenshots of her message with the supposed the bold and beautiful actor for a police inf investigation into the financial scam what was what was found far more disturbing you have to get rid of your husband, honey. I need you so much. The person claiming to be Kay wrote to Roxanne in a December 1st message, according to police documents attained by WCVB. Roxanne replied that she needed to do some thinking, and later at 2.43 p.m. she texted back, making an amazing soup, spoop, soup, special potion. He'll be hungry when he gets back. Just enough for him. And then at 4.26 p.m. she messaged, hubby got back not feeling well. Maybe I can collect life insurance, according to the documents. Honey, when will that be, Kay replied, to which Roxanne said she didn't know. Less than a, an hour later the same day at 5.11 p.m., Roxanne dialed 911 to report that her husband was unresponsive. He was rushed to Neshobe Valley Medical Center, where his daughter remained at his side. When he regained consciousness, Heath asked her father what he remembered before he got ill. Paul stated that Roxanne made him soup, but it wasn't very good. He stated that it tasted bitter. 
according to a police report. He then contacted the police on December 3rd, and uh, he took her mother to police station to speak to the investigators. The mom admitted to texting who she believed was the soap star, but she didn't hurt her husband. Pip, how much more time do I have? Uh, we're, we're over. Oh, all right. Well, I'll continue this when we get back. Okay. I thought you were giving me one minute. I didn't know you were wrapping up. I was... You didn't look up. She did. You, weren't, you were looking down. You didn't well, I'm it. reading. You got to let me know. I, I understand that, but what is, you know... I saw her finger, but it was looking like this. No, I was waving my whole hand. <laughs> you got to let me know. How, how long was it? It was, um, what, 934 or something? All right. I can I can shorten that. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's get back to it. Um all right. So this next segment will be 10 minutes and we'll continue with this here. Joe, okay. do you have plug uh, do you have a plug for the end of this? Uh yeah, one. Yeah. Is this the last segment? No. Yeah. No. This is 10 minutes. This is the third segment. And then there's a fourth. Yes. Fine. No, you're right. She's wrong. I didn't say that. You said yes, this is the last segment. No. Didn't she just say yes? You said it was 10 minutes, and I said yes. No, he said whatever. That's throwing me under the bus. You're under the bus. Here we go. Are you ready? 10 minutes. Okay. This is Davin's day. All right, let's continue with this countdown. I will continue with my catfish victim love fail story. Uh, Thurston was saying that they loved me and they wanted me to leave my husband, but I had no intentions of leaving my husband. I love my husband very much. Things soured at the precinct when cops tried to take away her phone and iPad as part of their investigation. When uh, officers attempted to take her into custody for interfering with the investigation, she allegedly kicked a cop in the crotch. She was charged with an intimidation of a witness, a resisting arrest, assault and battery on a police officer, in addition to attempted murder. She was later slapped with an additional charge of violating protective order when she sent a letter to her husband. Uh, so, all right, so here we go. Uh, um, not only a catfish, but a catfish pretending to be a soap star. Uh, she poisoned her husband because of a scammer. This show's all about scammers. So, again, points for that. Assaulted the police, kicked the cop in the crotch, so he most likely will have a, an ex experience, a, a near-term love fail. It could, <laughs> she couldn't even make the own, her own soup taste good, and your own daughter t turns on you, and this is perfect for the show. This, is both, this could be number one, but I put it in number two. Joe, what say you? Give me your story, please. Okay. And Mr. Yao... A middle-aged man from Dengchun, China, Henan province, had been trying to raise money to start a family by growing watermelon in Myanmar. From an entrepreneur, is he? <laughs> he had been gone for years, but he still kept in touch with his best friend, Zhao Li, to whom he confessed last year that his business was going well, but he wanted to meet a good woman. Li told him that his wife had a girlfriend who was also single and that you could introduce them. Because Zhao was still abroad tending to this fruit business, online dating was the only viable option. The two hit it off and agreed to continue their long-distance relationship until Zhao returned to China. About three months into the relationship, the online relationship, Mr. Zhao's online girlfriend told her that her brother had been in a terrible accident on a construction site and she desperately needed 5,000 yuan, which is about 730 bucks, for medical expenses. Thinking it wasn't too much money, Zhao agreed to send it to her, but only a few weeks later, she again asked for money claiming that her father was sick. He ended up sending over 80,000 yuan, which was 11 grand, Ooh. over the course of a year. Earlier this year, Dow told his friend, Ching Lee, how well the relationship was going and how he decided to return to China to meet his girlfriend and hopefully marry her. Lee didn't have any negative things to say. Only this month, he called his friend and told him that his girlfriend may not exist and he might, not, and he might have been dating his wife. All the time. Wait, wait. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Dating whose wife? His friend's wife? His friend's wife? Yeah. Yeah, the friend's wife. Oh. Uh, so instead it was the girlfriend, it turns out it was the wife. Oh. You seem to have been cheated by his girlfriend. Instead his wife had left him Father replied, which suggested that Lao had been right. He was just alerting the 
Well, I think for I point for scamming. Yes, now, yeah. obviously. Well, I think first we have to eliminate pips because what I am because we're dealing with two cat we're dealing with two catfish here, and this is the show. So <laughs> I I I think we have to. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pip, I, Pip, I, I would strongly encourage you to keep that story for Father's Day because that show might do quite well there. That would be um, my advice yeah. to you. Yeah. I know it was ugly, but I concede because of the excellent scamming possibilities of your two sports. Yes. So I don't. I mean, Pip's ultimately going to have to decide. I mean. I still contend you got a celebrity scammer. I mean, not a real celebrity, but you thought a soap star is telling you to kill your husband for a measly $8,000. You're not making that on Bold and the Beautiful? I got to off my husband? Really? Do I? But this is ultimately going to be pips to us sort out here. I, I like my story because basically um, they, they get set up with somebody that was a girlfriend. The girlfriend who he fell in love with told him that he needs money for father he needs money for uh, an accident on a construction site and his father was sick laid out over 11 grand on this and it turns out that not only was she scamming him she was scamming the husband and the husband was on the line for the money the guy never paid it so not only do you have a scamming story that fits in with the genre that we do you also have two that dose in spanish two what young young in chinese you have two people that got broken hearted. Well, I, I, I can make the same argument that there's a love fell between the uh, the daughter who, tur who turned state's evidence on her mom. I mean, there's a love there's a love fell there too, my friend. I mean, that's blo but this is more of a romantic relationship. It's all about love, my friend. All about love. I understand, but it's a romantic relationship. That is the difference, my friend. Where two people in a romantic relationship have been scammed. What's the name of the show, David? What do we do? Scam the scammers. What is this? Love sales. Love sales. Scam the scammer. Bingo. I win. All right, Pip. What do you say? What do you say, Pip? <laughs> I I got it. I got to give it to Joe. All this right. is an excellent love fail. Two ways and scammers. It, it's full of all the good stuff. Yep. All right. That's fine. I'm fine with that. All right, so Joe's on the board for number two. Good story, Joe. Uh, yeah. Who goes for who goes first? Who went first on that last one? I did. All right, so Joe goes first here. Oh, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, uh. This is for the top, the biggest love fail of the year. How much time do we have in this segment, Pip? We have another uh, three minutes. All right, Joe, we'll start us. Here we go. Rhonda Versace shut down her restrained husband's air conditioning business, but not before exposing him. A Florida woman had become online hero after exposing her husband's alleged affair on their business Facebook page. After Rhonda Versace found out her estranged husband Eric was cheating on her, she immediately, immediately sprung into action. She shut down their shared business account, Old More Air Conditioning, by canceling their liability insurance forcing its closure, but she made sure to give the whole story to the couple, cu couple's long-time customers. She said, Old Mars AC is no longer in business. <clears throat> Thank you for your support over the 10 years. She wrote on Facebook on Monday, August 28th. Unfortunately, Eric has decided being involved romantically with another woman is more important, desirable, and valuable than the, the, the life of his children, his wife, and ultimately his customers. She continued, due to his horrific actions, we've been forced to close the company, cancel all insurance, general liability, and workman's comp, and no longer can legally work in Pinellas County. Please be aware you may also be subjected to criminal prosecution and end up with a $10,000 fine if you continue to authorize Eric Viserdi to perform any of your air conditioning services. Again, thank you for your support, and I deeply apologize for all the inconvenience you concluded. Eric, you're disgusting and a disgrace. Response to the Florida woman allegations were overwhelmingly positive, with many customers applauding Ronda Positari. <clears throat> there you go. Wow. All right. All right. I got. I got. I got to say, I like Joe's second story better than uh, his first story. Um, Pip, what do we got here? Uh, 
Fort Ripley man pleads guilty. Wait, wait, I mean, how much time do we have? Because I don't want to like, uh, like cut it in the middle. Oh, I can oh, go. We'll have to. How much time? We almost have. We have a minute and fifteen. All right, go. All right. Fort Ripley man pleads guilty to criminal vehicular homicide, admits to fatally hitting wife with SUV. Oops. <laughs> um, what could you say? I could see doing that. <laughs> a man charged with fatally hitting his wife with an SUV and letting her die on the roadside last year in Crow Wing County pleaded guilty to criminal vehicular homicide on Wednesday, the court records show. Tony James McClellan, 47, pleaded guilty to criminal vehicular homicide as part of a plea deal that saw other charges dropped, including second degree and first degree manslaughter. His wife, 49 year old Angela Marie McClellan, was found dead along a frontage road on the west side of Highway 371 in Fort Ripley Township, about 15 miles south of Brainerd, wherever that is, on the morning of June 25th. Sorry, got a scroll while officers were still identifying her court documents state that angela mcclellan's daughter called authorities to report her missing officers learned that she and her husband tony had been at a birthday party in the area the night before officers went to the home that hosted the party and talked with several people who confirmed that the mcclellans had been at the party and left together between 1 a.m and 2 a.m on june 25th and and now, is, that, is that time for this segment should we continue uh, on the other our cliffhanger yeah okay all right we'll, we'll get the rest of that on the uh on the last segment of the show all right so this last segment is 10 minutes and 50 seconds yep. it's hard doing it under the gun yep come on don't be a cock Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just yelling at myself. It's just and, business as usual. Yes. And the stuff that's not working. All right. Oops. Come on. Here we go. All right. You ready, Pip? Yep. All right. Here we go. No. No. Nine. There we go. <laughs> it's Gavin. It's Gavin. It's Gavin. Yeah, last segment of the night. Love fails countdown. I got the third biggest love fail of the year. Joe's got the second biggest love fail. Pip is in the middle of her contender for the first biggest love fail. Yes. So um, this is a story about a man who ran over his wife with the SUV. So they had been at a birthday party, middle of the night. They added that they'd both been drinking alcohol with beverages. Oh, my. But Angela looked intoxicated and Tony didn't. So Tony was driving when they left. Investigators said they went to Tony McClellan's home and gave the same timeline as others at the party, according to a criminal complaint. However, he added that Angela had thrown a hissy fit and they got into an argument, so he dropped her off along Matt Road and left her there while he went home and went to bed. He claimed he didn't realize that she didn't make it home until he woke up the next morning. But when investigators got a search warrant and searched the McClellan's Ford Explorer, the complaint said that there was blood and tissue in several areas and a single hair. And DNA testing confirmed that it was Angela's hair. Additionally, location data showed McClellan traveled south on Legend Lane early that morning, stopped around 100 yards south of Killian Road, and then backed up towards where his wife's body was found and stopped, according to the charging documents. Then the vehicle took off from the scene, reaching speeds of over 100 miles an hour before he got home, like a bat out of hell. And when the officers went back to Tony McClellan's home, he explained that his wife had gotten mad at him for looking at another woman and was grabbing the steering wheel. However, he claimed that he was pretty drunk. I don't remember much after that. And then now he has a sentencing date. Now, this is a big love fail because, first of all, the green eye of jealousy was going on at that party. He was looking where he shouldn't have been looking. And he he dropped her off on the side of the road, ran her over, backed up, ran her over again. That's a love fail for you. I gotta say again, I feel like 
you you chose wrong. I feel like your second story was a bigger love fail than this one. Really? Yes. Killing killing the wife with the kid in the bed is certainly special. You just yeah, have to go up against two scamming stories. That All one right. does have a, a chef's kiss. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Anybody could run over a wife. I said I, when you started, I go, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. So sometimes you just have to go for barbaric, you know, in these things. But a little twist on the target of the barbaric barbarism is nice too. Now this is this is not um, a fun love fail. This is not a fun story. Uh, I gave you fun. Lo- I gave you fun love fails. This is not that. Yeah. All right. A Pennsylvania woman was arrested after she severely burned her disabled boyfriend boyfriend's ten month old English bulldog with a blowtorch, according to police. Now, right there, I know I, I'm on the right track because Pip was moved back and her mouth is open, waiting for something to land in it. So I know I'm a good place. <laughs> <laughs> oh god jamie wade who had suffered a brain injury and received his beloved spunky as a therapy dog came home monday to find the poor pooch in distress and covered in burns wade's friends rushed the dog to a veterinarian where she was placed in an oxygen tank his living girlfriend brianne venary 23 was arrested by pennsylvania state police on thursday and charged with felony animal cruelty after she allegedly tortured the poor dog by burning the pup across her body including her genital area inside her ears inside her mouth and stomach there are cigarette burns all over the body there are cigarette burns in her mouth in her ears wade had previously reported to police that venary abused the puppy wade's friends have launched a gofundme to help cover spunky's medical costs after they were given a bill totaling nine thousand dollars the puppy is receiving treatment at the cheat lake animal hospital in west virginia she's on an oxygen and iv pain meds and a catheter because she has blood in the urine according to a post on the fundraiser she could possibly even have to have surgery to prevail to re- uh, repair her private area so here, here here we go here kids you're trying to emotionally hurt your handicapped boyfriend brain damaged handicapped boyfriend you torture not just his pet his therapy pet not even the run of a mill dog, but it's therapy dog. The extent of the abuse to the puppy shows that not only have they failed to love, but they failed in general decency. To abuse an animal like this is not some act of rage. This is premeditated love fail. This is by far the biggest love fail though out of the nine stories we have covered this this uh this year. Uh, first of all, the ASPCA is never going to get ad time on our show. Uh, <laughs> Why? Why? We're not supporting it. We're, no, we're reporting but, it. But oh my God. Oh it's my terrible. God. It's terrible. He, he burnt the dog. Repeatedly. Uh, I don't know if this is a love fail. I think this is a human fail. Well, yes, but that's what these love fails are. There's a fail in humanity. Think about it. You have You have a brain damaged significant other. It's bad enough if you tortured them, but you go, nay, nay, how could I do even worse? Let me get their beloved therapy dog, wait for it by the name of Spunky. You can't do that to Spunky. You can't do that to Spunky, kids. That is by far the... I deal with both of your stories. Okay. Both, both of your stories um, are, are, are uh, brutality. Yes. Brutal, 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 brutal thing. Um, do you, do you think about the brutality? It's an act of immediate hate and violence. No, no, no. Mine was not an act of immediate hate and violence. To do this was premeditated, but go on. Oh, premeditated, but the way they did it. Now, with that being premeditated. said, let's go to show prep. We picked the biggest love sales of the year. Um, we picked three, which we have. Remember, creativity is always a plus. Was that creative? Yes. No, it wasn't a violent way, but I think putting an online thing on the wife with the husband's company saying how he cheated on him, and and if you do business with him, you will be you you will be sued and it shut down. I think that that is creative, which is the the biggest point of doing this, and I feel my story wins because out of this brutality is brutality, hatred is no. Brutality. 
creativity. This was this, but this was creative brutality. This was this was. I'm not. I'm so mad at my boyfriend. See, brutality. I'm so mad at my boyfriend. I'm gonna go after my boyfriend. The creative thing is like, nay, nay. I'm gonna make you suffer so much that I'm going to take it out on your therapy dog. That is the create. I have creative and brutality. All right, I think we can eliminate Pip here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to start whittling down. Pip, I'm sorry, but I think running over your, the dame, eh, I think that has to go, Pip. But wait, they, it, it's a, all about love and hand in hand with jealousy. She couldn't stand him looking at the other women, so he, he ran her over because she was throwing a hissy fit, quote unquote. Yeah, I don't know, Pip. I feel like that's run of the mill. Joe, am I wrong here? Should Pip still be in this? Um, I think for the simple fact that it was an act of brutality, but it wasn't in, in a way that was creative. I think maybe we can whittle that down. Now, in your in your case, you said, "Well, it's creative." But, all right, you you hurt an animal, the animal, and it was horrible what happened, and it affected one person, and and that's what. But what this woman did was let the whole neighborhood know, the whole community know that he cheated, that the business being shut down because he is a cheat was what to the kids. And awful. And if you try to use him, you're going to be sued. With that, it is more creative than a single sense of what you're. Nay! Fucking, no, 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 no. Single point against a point that is affected over. Nay, a nay! And a community. I see your point, and I rebut your point. You think anybody's going to hire this woman for anything? You think this woman is going to get going to be able to do anything in her life now? No, no. She's famous for all the wrong reasons. She took it out on a ten-month-old puppy. But that's a, a, a puppy. Puppy. It's a horrible thing. But it's spread out. My story is more creative, and it's spread out. No animals got hurt. Right. No animals got hurt. Yeah, all right, but it's more creative, and it was spread out in a, in, in a more effective way than yours. More was. effective? we got a dog on life support. I understand. I don't that. think you do. You've got a guy that lost his livelihood and, 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 and also was humiliated in front of a whole community. I have a brain-damaged man without his therapy dog. Brain damage. You can relate to that. Where is your sympathy? <laughs> I understand. I don't think you do. But it's also it's also more intense in, in, in mind. My story is the better story, more creative. All right, Pip. Um, all right, all right, all right. We got it. We got it. We both made our case. Pip has to weigh in. Wow, you know, this is really a tough one. Really a tough one. I really don't like the animal hurt. I don't like hurty spunky. However, um the and i do love that not only does she screw over her husband but his whole business because nobody can hire her without getting in trouble and getting fined i mean that's really good that's really good this is a tough one this is a real tough one i don't want to vote towards the just the brutality of the dog getting hurt i mean that really is hitting him where he lives but oh god the doggy um I got to go with Joe's. Oh, this is a travesty. All I right. got to go with Joe's because he he's embarrassed and got spread all over the place. And she ruined his business by taking away the insurance was brilliant and so brutal. All right. That's a travesty. Read, read the read the winners. We got to get out of here. Let's go. All Let's right. Go. Number three, Davin got it. Number two, that was Joe. And number one, Joe. Joe wins this one. Congratulations, Joe. It's a travesty of justice. All right, Joe, where are you going to be? <laughs> you know what? I think I think Taylor Swift made this happen. All right. Uh, where are you going to be? Quickly. I'm going to be uh, with Fragile Sky, my band. We're going to be playing at Stereo Garden uh, on February 23rd, Friday, February 23rd. Go to Loaded Info at clubloaded.com. It's going to be a great night. Thursday, February 22nd, Size Bunny Productions presents a live comedy at the River Grill in Newburgh, New York, starring Mike Burton. For tickets, 845-561-9444. Uh, Friday, February 23rd, Size Bunny, present, Size Bunny Productions presents a live comedy in Munaki, New Jersey, at Bistro 107. I'll be headlining that show. For tickets, call 201 440 0339 Friday, September 23rd, September uh Side Splitting Productions presents live comedy in Wanakee, New Jersey at Il Palazzo starring Eric Tartaglioni. For 
for tickets, call 973-839-9696. Friday, February 24th, I'll be in Mechanicville, New York, at the Fairways and Half Moon. For tickets, call 518-664-1578, extension 2. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us. If you like us, tell a friend if you hate us. Tell no one. Either way, please keep on listening. All right, kids, good show. Thank you. Good show, guys. Take care. All right, have a good week. See ya.